But I'm sure that you've experienced this uh, as you've been either on your cell phone or, or on your cordless phone. You're, you're talking away, and it's very important, and all of a sudden you hear that, that sound, that beep that says, unless you get some power to this phone, uh, you're going to lose your call. Or, or maybe you've been on your <clears throat> laptop computer, and you've been uh, computing along and writing stuff, and all of a sudden that little uh, window pops up in the corner that says that, in, in so many words, you better get a pat plug me in or I'm going to lose all your data. You know, it just happens. Or maybe uh, you've settled down into your nice chair or the seat that you have and you, you, and you pick up your, your remote and, uh, and, and you're getting ready to watch your TV show and you, you, you push it down to start it and nothing. You push a little harder, you, you shake it a little bit and you kind of go, What's, how come it's not working? And then you look in the back, you open up and, there, and there's no batteries uh, because your kids took them to fire up their Wii remote and uh, uh <laughs> the reason i can say that because that's happened uh, but you know we are very much uh deter uh dependent on on power sources whether it be batteries or whether it be uh, the city power grid or a generator we want that power and we need that power but did you know that there is a power source available to us that's even greater greater than any battery, greater than any generator, greater than any uh, power grid of our city. It's, the power, it's a power source that we can freely plug into. It's the power source we've been singing about already this morning and we celebrated last Sunday. It's the power of the resurrection. Uh, a source of power the Apostle Paul knew full well and said this in Philippians 3, verses 10 through 11. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection of the dead. You see, when Jesus uh, burst out of that tomb on that Sunday morning so many years ago, he uh, sent a, a new power of truth that rippled through our world, a power like none other, a power so strong it can give hope to the hopeless. It can give life to the lifeless. It can ignite the fires of passion of the apathetic. It can inject courage into the heart of the cowardly. It releases free sin's slave. It reconnects the abandoned and provides direction to the aimless. When Jesus was raised from the dead, a powerful seal of authenticity was awarded to all that Jesus said and all that the Bible teaches, that his teachings... And this book, the Bible, is true. And that this resurrection power is stronger. That truth is stronger than false and falsehoods. That good is stronger than evil. That love is stronger than hate. And that life is stronger than death. A power we need to live, to live life God's way. To live the life he has for us. The way he intended for us to live. For not only is Jesus still transforming lives, as we talked about on Palm Sunday, and that he is still providing a purpose for life, as we saw on Tuesday of Holy Week, and that Jesus is still our servant leader, washing our feet, as we experienced on Monday, Thursday. That he is still Savior, as we felt on Good Friday, and that he is still alive as we celebrate it on Easter Sunday. But for every day we live life, He still is the way. His resurrection is the source to power up our lives. We know the Apostle Paul was plugged into that power. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he locks in on the reality of this power, this power of the resurrection, explaining how we might receive its charge and be powered to live life God's way. He sums up the whole chapter in the last two verses of that chapter. I'd like for us to read them together, and if you wouldn't mind, you can take out uh, your outline out of your worship folder, and if you wouldn't mind standing with me, I'd like for us to read. Uh, let me read aloud to you that last two verses of that chapter. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 57 and 58, Paul writes, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come again and celebrate the truths of your resurrection. Lord, thanks that it's not just a one-time-a-year thing we can do. Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And we're thankful for the reality of that in our lives. And Father, I'm praying this morning that you will encourage each one of us how we can continue on and plug into that power. Help us see. Give us insight to our own lives and how we might uh, really plug in and let that power fro- flow through our lives. Use this time to pray in your son's name. Amen. Please have a seat. I encourage you to keep your <clears throat> outline out. There's fill in the blank, as you can see, and the answers will be on the screen. You can also write down uh, some of the other verses we mentioned because we will be looking uh, through those other verses. Uh, I want to look this morning at four ways to live out and plug into the power of the resurrection. And, and we will breathe through, and really breathe through, verses 20 to 58. There is a lot in there. Uh, we could spend a number of days together going through that, but we'll try to get this through that in just the time that we have. But over Palm Sunday and Easter, we looked at verses 1 to 20, and now we'll be looking at verses 20 to 58, but focusing on, on four ways to live out and plug in the power of the resurrection. The first one is to live victoriously in verse 57 of 1 Corinthians 15. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the ancient world, and really even today, death looks like it is a champion. Uh, for we all face it. That's why people wear t-shirts that say this, uh, the one who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> Another person wrote a t-shirt that says, the one who dies with the most to- toys still dies. <laughs> <clears throat> but regardless, death has always been the winner. For it was the end of every creature until Jesus became the victor. Paul explains this in in verse 55 of 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Because Jesus rose from the dead. He conquered death. Victory means winner. uh, To win, to conquer. And we have that victory in Jesus because he defeated death. Now death is that door. uh, The doorway to change. The doorway to, to be rearranged because the reality is of existence is that, is that this shell of flesh that, and blood that we live in is not fit for eternal God's eternal kingdom. We will either be changed as a result of death, this flesh suit dying, or we will get a new body in the twinkling of an eye, as Paul brings out in verses 15 and 54. But either way, we will be like the resurrected Jesus, who though he looked and acted like he had a flesh body. Uh, you could see him. You could touch him. He ate. He talked. People could reach out and feel that he was there. He could also appear and disappear and pass through walls, which is pretty cool. Won't that be fun? <laughs> uh, but the point here is death is not the end. Yes, sorrow for the loss and the, the break in relationship. But for those who believe, it's only a pause until we meet again. <clears throat> 